we're here today at the Lancaster Goodwill and it looks like there's actually a line of people over at the Goodwill bins so I'm not sure if they're they've met capacity over on that side I'm hoping that we can actually get in over here I don't know if they have like a line if you it looks like they're they're getting into the regular store so i don't think we'll have a problem but i'm really excited today we usually have tremendous luck here at this goodwill so i'm really excited we're gonna head in and see what we can find that we can flip for a profit so here we go i decide today that i am going to start out in the frames and clearly there are no frames that are catching my attention because i'm moving straight through them but I do notice this set of china down on the bottom, and I have to turn it over to at least check it. There are relatively modern markings on the bottom. I'm not impressed. These are Homer Laughlin, but they don't strike me as being anything special. I am trying to maneuver my way down this aisle, having a bit of trouble there, but I do manage. I just sideswiped a little. This piece right here, I liked the design on it. It looked like it was missing a cup, however, so I decided I didn't really need that. These right here are Williamsburg Reproduction Candlesticks. They were $1.99. We had an entire lot of Williamsburg Reproduction not too long ago, and I don't recall it selling very well, and so I decided that I was going to pass on those based on a previous experience uh, with that reproduction pottery. These pieces appeared to be made in Mexico. I've found those before. I passed on them this time few brass candlesticks there. Now I did notice this cake stand. Uh, the bottom was marked, but it just didn't, it just, just didn't resonate with me. It stayed on the shelf. We've got some hunting scenes here. They are marked Alpine. They were vintage, they weren't antique, so I left those. I moved them a little bit safer on the shelf. This here is a ginger jar. It is missing its lid. They had $1.99 on it. Um, I found that ginger jars missing their lids also make beautiful vases. And so I decided that because this had a bird on it, and it was a nice lidless ginger jar, I, I would still buy it for $1.99. Oops, we almost had a collision. I'll tell you what, this Goodwill just gives me anxiety. I really liked the stopper in this bottle, and I thought, you know, I don't know if that stopper goes with this bottle. That's a nice stopper. I wasn't as convinced about the bottle. This piece right here looked like a little bit like Dansk. I didn't see any markings on the bottom. I think they're usually marked with stickers, though. This is just a little tile trivet. It looks like somebody made it. It's probably mid-century, but it was a mess. We've got some really cute dogs here. I don't need the dogs. I had actually seen this exact same plate a few days ago at another Goodwill, so I found it very interesting that one would also show up here at this Goodwill. That was an interesting piece. It was obviously missing one of its faces. This reminded me of the McCoy strawberry, however it was missing its lid and when I picked it up it was super light, so I believe it may have been a reproduction or a knockoff of a McCoy version. I liked these because they had poppies on them. They were marked Pier 1, however, and I just, I don't really know the resale of Pier 1. Here 
here we've got a nice beautiful rose they are almost always chipped on the petals and I do believe that one had a chip on the petal and that is why I left it behind now this is made in India it is a duck it is $2.99 I'm not feeling the brass not today I did find this art glass angel. Now I do always pick these up because if my kids do not want them, I resell them. But I, I usually pick them up with my kids in mind um, just because my kids like art glass of any shape or form. Um, and so I, I decided to grab that. It, it's more than it's more than likely a Chinese piece. Now this is Lennox, and I liked the bisque finish on it. However, when I was turning it around, I did notice that there was some staining on it, and I, I don't know how easy the staining would be to get off of the bisque, uh, and so I leave it. These little cups here, kind of reminded me of Imari. Uh, they were modern, vintage, eh, teetering there in the middle. It's a nice little cobalt piece. I like this plate. I believe it is RS Prussia unmarked. I've been doing a lot of research recently on RS Prussia. And in my mind, I'm seeing this plate as, as I'm going about my research. And so when I saw it on the shelf, I'm thinking, I'm almost positive this is RS Prussia. And so I decided to grab this plate because I told you guys, I'm, I'm passing up single plates unless they're great. Like this one. This is also a great plate. It is milk glass. It is hand painted. I'm, I'm thinking possibly Westmoreland, but I'm not positive. I haven't done any research on it. Up here I spotted this little bottle it was a pale pink I did really like it unfortunately it was missing its stopper and it did have a ground lip which indicated it at one point did have a stopper and we've got some more single plates here and I'm just kind of checking them over to see what they're marked I'm always turning stuff over to see what it's marked another piece of cobalt glass I believe this may be an ink well but I think think something's missing there and it's got a giant chip on it now this piece right here is a hobbyist piece I find it a lot in blue but in this case it was green it was initialed on the bottom it was very lightweight uh, I did pass on that piece because it was a hobbyist piece over here I liked the form of these but I felt like they were modern pieces. Now this I found to be very interesting and I'm, I wasn't sure if it was maybe a perfume that was missing its lid. It could also possibly be a bud vase, but I really liked the facetedness of it and I found it curious. Here we have some rice pattern bowls and sauce dishes. A whole bunch of, and I thought it was funny, $2.99 and $4.99. Obviously, they increased the price there a little bit. Uh, but those are rice pattern dishes. These books, I thought they were just books, and then I realized that they are coin books. What? Coin books. Do they have coins in them? negative they do not have coins in them but i know from shopping with andrew that he is always looking for these coin books they have a decent resale value and for a dollar 99 that's great he's he's always going to the coin club meetings and they're really easy for us to move if not on ebay in person now this looks like a muffiner, uh, which would be for powdered sugar. It's just a very large shaker. I like the horse. The horse is a hobbyist piece. The horse stays on the shelf. 
And I liked the glaze on this piece. I really liked the grill glaze on this, but the marks on the bottom indicated that it might be a student art project. It was like a homeroom or something on the bottom. Now, I did like these plates. They were royal china, made in the USA, but but I did notice that the bottom plate was missing a lot of the gold, and so I passed on those. Unfortunately, we've got some carnage there on the bottom most shelf. Here we have hardcore happy dust. Here we've got a mama bird and a baby, and I feel as though we've looked at this one before. There are no markings on it, so I decide to leave that one behind. Got some plates here. I did like this vase, but it kind of reminded me of Chokin, um, which I believe this is Japanese and it's just it doesn't have a very high resale value and so even though I like the vase and it had a bird on it I did pass on it swan I thought was maybe Lennox but it was marked made in China and actually now I'm seeing the boxes right next to it This piece right here appeared to be recycled glass, and so I checked on the bottom to see if it was marked fire and light glass. You guys know I am on a mission, thanks to Yvonne Thrifty Rich. I am on a mission to find fire and light glass. However, some of it is not marked, and so I really don't know when I find it, I, I'm, but I will find it. I'll, I, I feel like I, I'll know when I find it. I will know. <laughs> There is a puppy. I like puppies. I decided to check this aluminum piece. I haven't been checking a lot of aluminum lately. But I decided to check this to see if it was Wendell August Forge. There was no markings on it. I believe it might be Continental. The chrysanthemum pattern. I liked this painting. However, I felt like there was just too much blue space. Far too much blue space. I did like it though. I found another pepper grinder. I don't know what my obsession with pepper grinders is these days, but I seem to pick them up a lot. I liked this piece. I found it interesting. There was chipping around the glass edge, and unfortunately, uh, it appeared as though one of the little feet was missing. And because of the damage, I decided to leave that. A floral frog here. These are great for displaying old marbles. I loved this set. And now it is modern, but it had foxes on it, and I love foxes. But the plate, unfortunately, did have a chip. I did turn it over to see the maker, and it was Grace Fine Porcelain. I just, it was so cute. It was adorable. I could see my kids drinking hot cocoa and eating cookies off of it. It looks like our friends have, have found a new home on the shelf instead of the box. So I spotted this and I absolutely loved the colors of it. It is marked on the back El Salvador, um, but I, I just love the folk art feel to it. It's got birds, it's got animals on it and houses and it was just really fun. And so I had to take it with me. Now there was a bunch of boxes here and I do check out the boxes. I don't know why, but I'm kind of on a box kick. This display piece I considered grabbing for Andrew, but I decided he's got a lot of display cases and that was in pretty rough shape. I was kind of curious what these were. I thought, oh, maybe they're tea lights. I don't think they were tea lights. They were something else entirely. 
we've got another box here. This one has a very dapper gentleman on it. And I tried opening it one-handed and there just really wasn't a whole lot to go on except for the gentleman on the front. But it wasn't worth buying the box for just him. Now there were some plates back here that were intended for display because they have plate hangers on them, but none of the plates really spoke to me. And I got some sticky gross stuff on my hands. So I decided to take a peek into the Halloween and I noticed this contraption here and this fancy candle. But then there was this creamer that was turned backwards and I turned it around and oh my gosh, will you look at that? Oh, deep breath. Um, this is a Ray Dunn creamer. It has the nest icon on it. It is an early Ray Dunn creamer for $1.99 and the lowest sold comps I could find were $200. The lowest, the lowest of the sold comps. The highest were upwards of $300 and I didn't even realize it at the time. That's why I just carelessly chucked it into my cart and kept moving because I figured if I can't resell this, I'll just use it. Well, more than likely, I'm not going to use it because I will end up breaking it. But hey, here's a really nice Limoges creamer that might sell for anywhere from $8 to $12. That one goes in the cart for $1.99 as well. <laughs> now I did spot this vase here. I really liked it, but like I said, the petals almost always have cracks and chips and boo-boos. Now we've got a little Lennox trinket box here that I did take a moment to check out. Part of the reason I'm going through the white section now is because after finding that nest creamer, I wanted to see if there was a sugar bowl here or possibly a teapot. I found a shell dish, which is neither of those things. Also another display piece. This has one of those marks, I, I found a covered dish not long ago um, that had the same mark on it, and so I decided to buy it. I believe it is Russian. We've got a little sugar bowl here and a matching creamer, so I decided to put them both towards the front of the shelf because they matched. Back here, I have spotted this milk glass vase. Now this is a Westmoreland vase. I can tell by the hand painting design on it. I decided to check it for chips and cracks and no, no, we are good. Got another little trinket box here. This one has all of its petals and its little extremities. I believe the back says made in Japan, but for $1.99, I really liked the purple bone china. I believe it's bone china. Just, just the quality of the porcelain, I believe, is bone china, but I'll have to peel off that Goodwill sticker to get a closer look at it. Got a souvenir piece here for Dallas. Made me think of my friend Jay from Dallas City Vintage. Now back here, I decided to check out those plates because I'm like, ooh, is this more Ray Dunn? It was a Target brand, I do believe, but it was not Ray Dunn. I started moving things off of this large dish, but then I noticed up here, we've got a milk glass vase that I've never seen that shape before, but it really, I came back to the dish. It seemed to be good quality, but when I lifted it, I noticed it didn't have the weight of crystal, and so I left it. This set right here, I went back and forth about because as you can see, there are chips on some of the pieces, but not all of the pieces. And it is a Limoges. And I am obsessed with Limoges, what can I say? But I really liked the pattern on it. I liked the pinks and the purples. And so I did decide to grab that. I liked the iridescence of this plate, but I do believe that it was a modern piece. I don't think it was very old. 
Now this piece in the box is Lefton. There are a lot of hobbyist pieces that look similar, but the Lefton pieces do have numbers on the back. Um, they are usually chipped when I find them, and that piece was chipped. Now this box, I liked the brass detailing on it. I thought that was a really nice touch. It wasn't just a plain wooden box, and so I decided to grab that. Now here I've found a Japanese urn style vase. Um, it is marked on the bottom foot made in Japan. When I first spotted it, I thought, oh my gosh, that looks like it could be Weller or something. But no, it was made in Japan. But it was still a nice vase, and so I decided that I would, I would take it. Here I've found some Noritake dishes. They have your typical scene of the lake. However, you can see there is no house on the nappy dish and there is no swan or boat. And the second plate is really nicely executed. The painting is really nicely done. There is no house, there is no swan, and there is no boat. So they're just, they're a little bit different than your typical Noritake scene. This bowl right here, I liked this. It is made in Japan. I believe it's marked under the sticker, but it was $1.99. This purse, you guys know I'm not the best with purses. I grabbed this purse. It was relatively cheap, but it was made in Italy. It was like Machino. See, I don't even know how to pronounce it. But it was made in Italy and I decided to take a chance on it. The other purses were just unimpressive. Although Juliet would have gone crazy for that troll bag. These plates right here, I did find these on the shelf and my mom loves to entertain. And so I decided to grab these for her. If she doesn't want them, I will probably end up reselling them. But they're just little cheese plates and I thought that she would probably end up using them for entertaining. They were marked on the back. I didn't recognize the mark. It is a modern mark, but it did have a crest, which I thought was kind of a little old school and interesting. Now I found some restaurant wear and these have the Pennsylvania state seal on them which I found to be interesting. I know some of the restaurant wear with railroad on it does very, very well. And so I spotted the crest and I thought, you know, that might be something. It's a little, diff a little different than your typical restaurant wear. Now the plates on the bottom did have a lot of staining. And so I really wasn't interested in the plates on the bottom. They also did not have the state seal, but I wanted those ones with the state seal. So there you go. There is our cart. It's about halfway full. And somewhere in there is a $200 creamer being crushed by everything else. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook. <laughs>